Hey guys, Boy here, and this is 7-Eleven's new technology, Offlane Alchemist. As of always, I want to remind you guys that I'm always streaming, be it casting or playing Doters, so make sure to tune in on my stream. Specifically tomorrow, I'll be casting with Moxie, the South American qualifiers of Star Letter, so follow her on Twitch, but not before following me too. What you need to know about this Alchemist is that he got around 600 MMR, going from 6k to almost 7k MMR with this new playstyle. Usually, if he knows he will be solo offlaning, he starts with boots at level 1 to offlane pool, while he gets the stout at the start if there's some sort of dual lane going on. There's a lot of good stuff about the new Alk. First of all, you get the 2.5 gold bonus from the zero minute bounties, even if you're not the one that picks them up. He takes a lot of harass from the Skyrath here, and this is where things get juicy. Offlane Alchemist breaks a lot of rules regarding offlane and overall Dota. The first one is that while he's getting back, you might be wondering that he'll TP to his tier 1. But in reality, his plan is completely different. While most offlaners rely on experience to be useful, Alchemist, as a hero, relies on farm. And what he does is TP to this shrine. Note first that the acid spray he commits is on the exact time to stack that camp because of the short leash range. Since he spent the mana as soon as he TP'd, he gets extra mana because of the region from the fountain to keep jungling. And also notes that he gets 170 gold from that bounty. And what he starts doing here might trigger you with small camps? Well, small camps receive the buff to gold, they give more than they used to. But but more importantly, they are the easiest creeps to kill and they give you the bonus gold anyways. With that gold, he already gets farm for a Qualum Blade and Clarities to start spamming that Acid Spray. Notice that this is a 6k game, so the supports are aware of what's happening and they do contest the jungle, but things will happen around the map. And with this fight, Clock feels forced to help and Elk can go back to farming. One thing that I noticed on the playstyle of this guy is that he will rarely play offlane Alchemist without a dual lane on the Radiant side. Note that there's no place on the Radiant jungle where level 2 Acid Spray will hit 2k at once, like it's possible here. On the dire side though, you have this juicy spot close to the bounty runes that as you will see really ramps up Alchemist's farm because of how Grievous Greed works. Note how he stacks that medium camp again with Acid Spray as he makes sure to get two bounties for him. Clock actually got the bounty rune and you can see through the minimap that he takes a completely different path. When he gets level 3, note how much he's able to take from this camp. He gets 600 gold in a very short period of time. and he tries his best to get experience from every lane that is free. He got level 3 top, then since Shadowfin died as Elk tried to help the mid lane, he farms mid, and at this point you're probably mad that I made this video, but please keep watching. This is clowny, but if it works in 6k games, it can definitely work anywhere. The thing about the offlane alchemist is that he is terrible in the offlane, and while that sounds crazy, he does create space and impact in other ways. For instance, he is awful against terribly, and while with any other offlaner, losing tower for jungle farm is plain wrong, alchemist has mechanics different from every other single hero in the game. And the only thing that Elk does is stack a medium camp while his tower falls, but he gets a double bounty knowing the clock is top. This was 420 gold, Kappa and you will see how this constant rune picking actually empowers him to have more than 1k GPM this game. If you're already triggered at this point, I'll tell you that the build he goes for pretty much every single game, unless he fits like 5 times in 10 minutes, is Brown Boots, Radiance, into Blink. What you need to understand is that he is the offlaner, so he needs to create impact as fast as possible, and it might not look like it, at least not yet, but he gets an 11 minute radiance this game, and while that can seem wonky when your offlaner can get an item like this that early, it definitely makes up for a tier 1 down. He really starts showing up in lanes when he gets his level 6, because of the sustain it gives him, but notice how he uses it. With the cooldown on the ult being nerfed quite a bit uh, some time ago, he always makes sure to use that skill in lane so that it pushes, meaning that there's less chance of him being ganked while he jungles afterwards. See how he goes for the next creep wave here, while under the effect of Chemical Rage? He does ult when he's jungling as well, but he will rarely go to the lane with the ult on cooldown. If you pop it in the jungle, then you're always second guessing going for lanes afterwards, and that's really a problem, especially when you're against Clock and those heroes that can just chase you. As he leaves the lane, look how much he prioritizes the bounties again. BSJ underestimated how much work Alchemist was doing, doesn't really pick that bounty up, and look at his gold, he pretty much has Relic, and while you might think that Radiant did not prioritize ganking that Alchemist, you need to again remember that he is an offlaner. In games where he got killed over and over again, his scores got huge since all resources were spent on the offlane Alchemist, and then he just 
farmed an axe or something for his course. The gold from bounties start ramping up rapidly and this low-key alchemist pretty much has radiance now. Another thing to watch out for if you're out of the loop and missed some of the alchemist changes, don't worry, I'll remind you of them. First, he has a minus 8 second cooldown concoction and provided it to channel it for the entire duration, you can stun enemies for 4 seconds and start casting another one before the stun even ends. At level 20, you pretty much double the amount of damage concoction deals and remember that that damage is amplified by the minus armor of the acid spray. At level 15, you get a 400 HP talent, which synergizes very well with what Radiance Alchemist wants, which is basically be immortal and wear people down with the Radiance and the HP region. With the slow but constant buffs to his talents and the bounty runes increasing in gold rapidly, you actually get a decent hero apparently. It's worth noting how he buys his own wards, since he's so rich anyways, and pay attention to what happens. How can you as a level 4 support deal with a Radiance Alchemist that early? I guess another buff to Alchemist is the supports having less levels than normal because of the bounty room changes, allowing him to just trample supports at this stage of the game. Another thing to note is the constant clarity usage. You might think that maybe Soul Ring would be a good item, but it's a lot of wasted gold early on, especially before you get level 6, and with the nerfs to more HP lost, a lot of the times the item hurts you before you get a chemical rage. It can be okay if you're dual laning and actually getting CS and levels, but in this case of the offlane slash jungle alchemist, I prefer the clarities and the approach he gets. With vision from a few heroes around the map, you can see how he farms those small camps from a very safe spot. Well, 12 minutes, 540 gold from bounties. about it, each double bounty that Elk gets means 270 extra GPM, but that number grows every 2 minutes. He also cares a lot about his teammates, with the Radiance completed and his only interest being more gold to get blink and travels, he leaves the Lanian experience to the Disruptor that has no levels. This might seem small to you, but the way this alchemist plays greedy, while at the same time caring about his teammates and enabling them, makes a big difference on what you're about to witness. As he farms that part of the map, look how he utilizes that spot multiple times to get farmed. With great acid spray placement and by TPing there at the correct time, he farms a lot of extra gold. Also worth noting that while the cooldown reduction on Concoction is great, having more stun duration and damage makes more sense since the cooldown reduction is as good as how much time you can actually lock people down. Again, note how the clarity usage is constant and non-stop to enable Alchemist to function to its full potential and get the items very fast. He doesn't start ganking as soon as the blink arrives, but he joins the first fight that starts, so let's keep watching to see the impact. Those low level supports have no way to deal with Alchemist right now, and actually the entire game. Notice that he never returned to the base after level 2 and he just kept bringing bringing clarities over and over again. Dagger is also an item that gives him safety going for double bounty runes like we see here, and the travels gives him the chance to increase that number even further. This movement that we're seeing here was repeated countless times, he went for it every two minutes. ever since he finished the Radiance. At 12 minutes, he took some time to TP because he was addressing the bottom push. At 14 minutes, he gets it instantly since bottom was pushing anyways. And because he utilized the map that well, while always pushing the lanes after he got level 6, he became this huge force. And he didn't stop committing to fights, he went for every engagement that Radiant forced. SF pushes mid here, okay. And at this stage, Radiant starts tilting. You might think that this is wonky, but there's a lot of games that this guy managed to win with the offline alchemist, and a lot of it has to do with the farming patterns around the shrines and the bounty room. Picking. After killing Shadowfin, since he was already on this side of the map, he doesn't repeat the other pattern, but instead stacks this infamous double camp while he looks for more bounties. While he doesn't find anything, he gets the ultimate arm and that's his manta completed. When he spots people killing his techies bottom, notice how he can go in. He casts Concoction from the fog and now that he has the cooldown reduction talent, look what happens. Shadowfin use after? Well, he already has another concoction ready.
Strong Tide was there, but he can Manta the slow out. And what can Radiant do? With the Blink Dagger, Elk can gauge whether he can engage back or not, and he clearly can. Or, I mean, while he gets silenced, look how his move speed allows him to stun Sky regardless. He dies. Still, a lot of space bot, Ravage spent, and Shadow Fiend dead. Still think that this is a meme? Well, watch this play. Radiant commits to a tier 2 push and Alchemist TP's hidden top while also using Concoction before TPing. If you remember, Tide used Ravage the last time, so he can go in, and with the Concoction timed correctly with the missile on Terror Blade, notice how it's almost impossible for Terror Blade to fight at all. This talent might seem super low key, but Alchemist can fight so much that it's insane. Usually, you will need something like a Shivas to really chase targets down, but even without the Octarine core cooldown reduction, they can keep up fighting non stop. You can see how he keeps on picking runes every single time. At the beginning of the fight I showed you, he had 2.5k gold, and here we see him finishing Octarine Core with extra 500 gold less than 2 minutes afterwards. The cooldown reduction allows you to use Concoction more liberally as well. He was trying to help his gyro here. Uh, he feels cold fit, stuns himself, but right afterwards he can cast it again and solo kills Skyrath once again. When he gets level 20, the power spike increases one more time and it's laughable how strong Alchemist becomes. With the 800 damage concoction topped with the minus armor from the acid spray, look at Clock's HP, it's insane. Also remember that he has two of those in pretty quick succession. With Octarine Core, you can reliably stun people with for 6 to 7 seconds while dealing insane amounts of damage. Not surprised? Well, he casts concoction in TPs again, this time on this catapult, and well, you have your Scepter Shadow Fin. well, he's already casting the second one. And whoops, that's the third one, SF Rage Buybacks, and this is pretty much the game. Okay guys, there's a lot of stuff I want to tell you. I promise I'll try to play the Meme Hammer Arc Warden as well as this offlane Alchemist on my stream on the weekends. Also, on Saturday, there will be a 1k MMR stream late at night, so tune in, I'll be playing, and then afterwards, I'll just drink a little bit and cast some pretty juicy 1k MMR games. Tomorrow, I'll be casting with Moxie, I already talked about that, and if you want to follow her or me on Twitch, that will be lovely. Thanks everyone for watching this video is of course sponsored by Pugna those guys have a huge library of videos and tutorials Pretty much everything is updated to 7-eleven and you'll be able to get a lot of knowledge and possibly MMR by watching all of these videos And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye